Yo, what's good YouTube? It's Pablo and welcome back to the channel. I'm bringing you guys another episode of the Madden 19 Cincinnati Bengals realistic rebuild starting from the 2019 offseason and we are now in week four of the preseason and I know I told you guys we will have real gameplay starting this episode but that will actually be the next episode because there was so much to cover in this episode you guys see it's over nine minutes worth of video so there's a lot of information i wanted to go over before we got into the regular season because i want you guys to be fully informed and fully immersed in this franchise so first of all uh, i want to go over our schedule and then we'll go over uh, the signings that I've made, some of the cuts I've made, the depth chart, uh, some upgrades, season goals, and then also we're going to take a sneak peek at the Cardinals team. We'll be playing in week one, and that brings me to the schedule. So week two, we're playing the Steelers, three versus the Browns, then the Dolphins before we hit our bye week. So we have two very important divisional games Honestly, all of them are important, so we have to be in midseason form uh, through the first four weeks. And then we have the 49ers who are on the rise, the Raiders who are rebuilding, the Bills, Browns, Jets, Jags, Patriots, Steelers again. We also have to play the Rams, so that will definitely be a storyline um, as Zach Taylor obviously was a member of that coaching staff and then we have the ravens the seahawks and then the ravens again so week 15 and week 17 are going to be very important games if we're in the playoff hunt so we could have some very interesting storylines at the end of the season and then like i said um we're playing against the Steelers and the Browns early in the season, so those will be important games as well. But this is a tough schedule. We play the Patriots as well, the Jags, who are talented. Um, they have drafted Will Greer as well. So uh, that is definitely a team to look out for. But here are the cuts that we did make uh, before we got to week one. Of course, we had to cut our roster to 53. So these are the cuts that I made and uh some of the notable cuts um i don't think there really were any all of our guys that we think will contribute are still on the team um hunter sharp uh josh malone actually um is a name that you may know that i cut um in favor of Auden tate because obviously we spent the money on him in the off season so we're going to be um uh, focusing on him so stay tuned in the next couple of seconds i'll be showing you the stats from the preseason but a notable signing i did was signing former cincinnati bingo and longtime cincinnati bingo leon hall to a one-year deal to play the fourth corner he's a 73 overall and i got a comment from uh, one of my supporters who pointed out that uh, the Bengals really struggled last year when we went out with a ton of injuries um, in our secondary. We got exposed. So I did want a veteran rather than a younger player to be able to fill in in case there are injuries. Uh, but take a look at the preseason stats here. Joe Mixon, 190 yards, averaging 4.5 yards a carry. So that's what I want to look at because these numbers are always going to be skewed because, of course, it's preseason. But uh, Auden Tate actually led us in receiving with 224 yards in the preseason. So that's pretty good to see um, him, you know, going out there and making a difference and catching balls and actually showing that he can play at this level, which is awesome, uh, especially because, like I said before, we spent the money on him. So we want him to pan out. So he's earned himself the fourth wide receiver spot we'll look at the depth chart in just a moment uh, but our offensive line didn't play that well but didn't play terribly in the preseason so we really just have to wait and see how this offensive line plays versus the Von Millers of the world the JJ Watts of the world the Aaron Donalds you know some of the pass rushers we're gonna have to play this season we really are gonna have some true test to this offensive line so I'm excited to see how it performs but uh, one person who may not be too excited is Andy Dalton because he's probably gonna be taking a lot of sacks but I guess we'll just have to wait and see how everything pans out but Randy Bullock I wanted to show you guys his stats he was two for four 
from beyond 50 yards, and that is a concern that we had in the offseason. We were considering replacing him, but if you paid attention to the transaction report, you will see that we assigned our rookie kicker, our seventh-round rookie kicker, Rodrigo Blankenship, to our practice squad, but he can be picked up by another team, so that is something to monitor. We went with the veteran because... Honestly, he had more kick power, and I didn't see a real point in downgrading at kicker at this time, but I didn't want to cut Blankenship. Uh, but moving on from the kicker situation, we're looking at our depth chart right now. Uh, one of the notable depth chart moves was moving Tyree Jackson to the number two QB instead of uh, Jeff Driscoll, who proved he can play as a fill-in last year. Even though you know we didn't win too many games, he proved he could do it. Uh, he actually moved down to the third spot. Um, in favor of Tyree Jackson. Um, of course, there's not too much mystery with who will be starting on offense and defense. One of the position battles was middle linebacker Alec Ogletree versus Trey Lamar. Obviously going to go with the veteran. Um, Trey Lamar did play very well, had a forced fumble, a couple of deflections as well. So he's increased his ability to cover in our system. Um, so we'll see how that pans out. He may eventually end up starting, but he will be playing a lot of snaps alongside uh, Ogletree as well. But at cornerback, we did put Pierre Desir at the number two corner rather than the slot. So we moved Drake Kirkpatrick to the slot. And I think our cornerback situation is pretty solid right now. Desir is primarily a zone corner, so he'll fit in. Uh, with what we're trying to do but at times I do like to man up and let our guys cover the person across from them straight up uh, but m for the most part we do play zone so Dazier I think will fit in very nicely at the number two cornerback spot um, now we are setting our season goal I honestly wanted to go with eight wins just because the offensive line didn't really get that much better we're still trying to develop some guys there billy price and cody ford um i was really really considering uh going with less than uh nine wins but i did go with nine because i think we can uh win nine games and go over 500 but we will have to play some good football and we really can't have injuries if we want to do that so we really have to stay healthy but moving on from our season goals to our player upgrades geno atkins just got an upgrade that bumped him to a 92 overall and william jackson just earned an upgrade and i upgraded his zone coverage skill and he went to an 86 overall and our rotational left end jordan willis also has an upgrade. I'm going to upgrade his power rusher, and that bumps him to a 78. He may be trade bait, um, depending on um, how things pan out, because he's a pretty good player, but he's going to be on the bench, and I really like Sam Hubbard more than him, so I may end up moving Willis. But as I promised, guys, we're going to take a sneak peek at the Cardinals team that we will be playing on the road in week one. And starting at quarterback, they have Tyrod Taylor. And I'm not sure a lot of people would have seen that coming, but they obviously thought Josh Rosen is not ready to take that step yet. And they did also get Tyrod a brand new weapon to come on down with him, and that is Golden Tate the third. And they also got Travis Benjamin. So Christian Kirk, the impressive rookie receiver, will be the third best receiver on the team. And I think that's a good situation to be in. Ricky Seals Jr. and Jermaine Gresham are their tight ends, former Cincinnati Bengal. Also, Ryan Hewitt plays fullback for this team, another former Cincinnati Bengal. But their offensive line honestly looks very suspect, so we'll be looking to attack that. Uh, we'll be bringing some blitzes. Um, and then we also already have some good pass rushers so they'll do their thing um in week one hopefully um and then looking at their defense they were able to land Quan alexander um former tampa bay buccaneer that is a player that i did want in the free agency but had too many bids so i honestly didn't even put mine in because i know the Bengals don't have enough prestige to compete with some of the other franchises that were offering him uh contracts but at cornerback, of course, they have Pat Peterson. He's always going to be a solid cornerback. Uh, have to watch out. A.J. Green versus him will be a very good matchup. And then they have D.J. Swearinger back on defense. So this is a pretty solid team. I can't wait to show you guys the gameplay. It is an awesome game, honestly. Like, you guys don't want to miss it. It's going to be really entertaining. I didn't want to rush it. So hope to see you guys in the next episode. It'll be the Bengals versus the Cardinals in Arizona. Leave a like and subscribe if you're new. Take a look at the playlist in the description, and I'll see you guys in week one. 
Later.